Jersey making the play happen 24 hours apiece. We are live here and running it up. And I have one of my favorite female MCs of all time, what? the Lady yeah. of Rage here in the Punch on Academy. What's up? Hey, how you doing? What I am favorites? minding my what business professionally. Favorites? And I'm, no, I'm going to tell you why. Because when I heard the new Dog Pound uh, uh -huh. a, a project, and I heard the premiere joint, and the way that you was just barring it out, it was just such an inspiration. It gave me a new enlightenment on how people that I idolized growing up could still say relevant and still keep a level of lyricism. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I expected, like from, you know, rough and stuff to Afro puffs to that type of song. Mm -hmm. So like, what makes you still care about hip hop and care about being an MC? <clears throat> Talking to the mic, yeah. So what makes me care about hip hop and, and MC? Speaking to the mic so we can hear you. You can't hear me? Let me yeah. slide this yeah. chair up. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. Can you hear me now? I know you yeah, just I'm a little yeah, under weather. Yeah, yeah. So, I, okay. yeah. so I consider myself a lyricist. I yes. consider myself an EMCEE, -E, mm -hmm. you know, the way Rock Kim put it. So, as an MC and a lyricist, you pride yourself on what you say and the thought that you're going to have somebody else think, like, dang. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what she said or did you hear what he said? You might not even get it until a month or two later. Yeah. Like something that's just- Like the rewind value. Yes, yeah. yes, you know. So I've always aspired to make people say, damn, did you hear what she said? The, the wow factor. The wow yeah. factor, mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, and being a female MC, being able to compete amongst the guys and have that respect from the guys as one of them it's yeah. like you know they yeah. respect me as one of them yeah. so that's something that i i i definitely love yeah. as being a part of hip-hop yeah one one of the amazing things that i saw recently was snoop dogg reacquiring death row records mm -hmm. and you know how amazing is it to see that this far in the game that you can reacquire such a a brand that was monumental in hip-hop and then reformat it in the way where they could put it back the power uh, to the artist. I mean, for Snoop to acquire it, where he started, yeah, that in itself is a feat. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure his plans. I don't know what his plans are, but I'm sure they have to be phenomenal. And I'm sure he's going to take it in a different direction. I would think he was going to, he's going to take it in a different direction, other than the direction it was once in, mm -hmm. because this is a new life now. It's not, it's death row, but it's new life. Yes. So breathe new yeah. life into it. Is the feel different, like being around it? Is it, um... Is the what different? Like, is the feeling of it different? Well, I'm not around. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I came in to do my part, yeah. and I'm in and out. In and so, out. So, yeah. I live in Virginia. Nice. I don't, I'm not, I, when I'm called, I show up. Man, shout out to my people that call and actually show up talking about <laughs> a punch on the cat. <laughs> Rage, I've been sitting here with a smile from side to side. Yeah. I just realized something really cool. We're in Brick City right now, mm -hmm. New Jersey at the Peace Fest right now. And you made the brick very famous in the movie where you threw it through Do Mike Epps. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. hey, that's something. Exactly. Now, um, Ice Cube is currently working out the details to work on the next Friday movie. Is he? I, I, I'm not sure if he's reached out to you yet, but we would love to see you in the next one as Ice well. Ice Cube reached out to me years ago. Okay. We were in, we were overseas, we were in Europe somewhere, and he tapped me on my back and he was like, yo, if I do another Friday, are you go will you be in it? And I just looked of at him course. like he was crazy. Like, what? <laughs> of course, yeah. Am I going to be in it? Shit. I mean, shoot. Yeah, I'm going to be in <laughs> of it. Of course. Yeah. So. We would love to see you I reprise your role as Baby D. Maybe this time throw two bricks through a car window. <laughs> or maybe throw no bricks. <laughs> maybe I'm more ladylike. Oh. Now, now the maybe me and Mike Epps now are yeah. lovers. Ooh. Or, you yeah. know, maybe a twist to... on it. Okay, okay. Maybe Ice Cube falls for me. <laughs> falls. Oh, Craig. Let's go. We, you know, yeah, we gotta... I'll finally get hooked up with your cousin yeah. Craig. We got to flip the script here on Shade 45. Matter of fact, let's play a Lady of Rage record. What record out of your catalog do you want to hear right now? Unfwittable. Ooh, unfwittable here on Shade 45. This is the Punch Out Academy. I am the infamous Amadeus. We'll be back with the Lady of Rage here on Sirius XM. The Punchline Academy, Shade 45, that was classic, the Lady of Rage, blessing your speakers in the left lane. If you're driving with no easy pass, mm. going through the tolls, this is absolutely 
the show for you. So when it's all said and done, obviously your story's not done yet, right? But when it's all said and done, what do you want your legacy and your contribution to hip hop to be? Hmm. I just want to be remembered as one of the MCs that's in the upper echelon, mm. the top tier. Whether it's whether you categorize me as a female MC, MC, whatever, I, you know that doesn't bother me. Some yeah. female MCs say, "Don't call me a female MC. I'm just an MC." Mm. I mean, you got actors and you got actresses. Mm. You got, mm -hmm. you know, you have. Those Talk things, about it. Those Talk things about don't bother it. me. So at, in the female MC category, I want to be known as one of the best. And some would say, arguably, I am in that list. Talk mm -hmm. about it. Of so, course you are. I, <laughs> well, thank you over there. <laughs> She's talking like uh, shit on the Punch on Academy. So I, I just want that to be known that even though my catalog is not as large as most that have come in and left a print, just the little bit that I did has left a print. Yes. So imagine if the powers that be had been powering the way we thought they would be, imagine where I would have been. But I also say what will be will be. It wasn't meant for me at that time. Maybe it's meant for me now. Mm. But I did leave a mark. Mm. And that's 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 how I wanted to be. That Yo, I left this a is mark. free jewelry here in the Punch On Academy. Man, this is Shay 45. I want to tell you on behalf of the hip hop community, Lady of Rage, we love you. We appreciate you, and you always have a safe space here at Shea 45 at the Punch On Academy. So the next time I see you, not only do I need an interview, I need a new Lady of Rage freestyle. A hundred percent, I need you to come can and I bless the microphone. Can I request one thing? Can, can I get a quick call me now? Because the Miss Cleo movie. Well, let so me say this before I say, call me now. I want to say, when you spoke about um, uh, the feel of death row, yeah. I do want to say that Snoop, Daz, Corrupt, RBX, Warren, all of us still have that close-knit yeah. tie. Like the family. The family is still, yeah. yes. We still have the family ties. We still are competitive. Me and Corrupt, we still, and RBX, we, because we consider ourselves the MCs of the mm -hmm. crew, so we're always comparing mm -hmm. stuff. Yo, hit, listen to this, listen to this. And so we sharpen each other like, damn, Corrupt, I gotta, okay, I gotta, damn, RBX, damn, Rage. So we, we keep ourselves sharp, so it's still it's still love. All right, man, this is the Punch Out Academy, Shade 45, Sirius XM. Before we get out of here, let's play this. I rock rough this stuff with my Afro Puff. So talk about this record. What was the concept behind the song? And what was the impact when the record dropped? Because I know it must have been a lot as a young artist and having a, a big record like this. That's, you can still play 30 years later. Well, there was no, what was your question again? Yeah, your Afro, the, the Afro Pulse record. So, like, what was the, the impact that you felt being a young artist and having a major record? Oh, I thought you said something before that. Uh. You did say something before that. I just don't remember what it was. The impact was surreal. You know, when I went to a stoplight and could hear it in the next car, yeah. it was like, that's me. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this is what I've been aiming for. This is what I want people to know about me. Like... That's that girl Rage. She's on death row. Man, she's dope. You know, that's what I wanted to happen, and that's what was happening. I was in New York when it dropped, and um, people were coming up to me, and it was just amazing, especially the people in New York, because New York is so critical. Yeah. And people wanted acceptance from New York everywhere. If you mm -hmm. were from some other place other than New York, you wanted New York to accept you. So Because it's the Mecca. It's okay. the Mecca. It definitely is. But, um... And they accepted me. Yeah. So it was a beautiful thing. All right. Shout to the Lady of Rage in the building. Classic heat here on Sirius XM. Shay 45. We'll be back with more left lane music after this. Oh.